So, the BBC Model B is now working. My very old but quite nice uh, RGB CRT monitor, uh, 12 inch, has turned up from eBay. And the first of hopefully several upgrades I'm going to make to the BBC has turned up. And this is the future was 8 bits SD to BBC SD card solution. So, this is what you get with this uh, rather nice SD card solution. You get this little SD card adapter, which the SD card goes in, and it's obviously designed to blend in well with the old BBC Micro. It has a short fly lead on it, and then it goes to this. Now this is the user port adapter, which simply plugs into the user port. And they also need the SPI ROM, which is this little chappy here, which plugs into the main board. And hopefully this should give me all of the games that I want to play on my BBC Micro. So let's get that installed. So we have to remove the top cover and we have to remove the keyboard. The keyboard doesn't need to be disconnected, just lift it out of the way because we're aiming to get to the ROM sockets, which are over here. Now currently we've got, uh, these two are the uh, system and basic ROMs, which obviously you need to get the computer to operate. Which leaves us three spare ROM sockets and I'm simply gonna put the SPI ROM into this one here. And that's all there is to it. You just have to make sure that you've got the notch at the top. So you go in with the notch this way and uh, also have a check afterwards that you haven't bent any pins while you've been putting it into the socket. And that's all there is to that. Now we've got to put the keyboard back on and flip it over. Okay, so we've installed the ROM. Now I've got it flipped over and we're looking at the underside at, at the uh, huge expansion ports. And this is one of the BBC Micro's really massive strengths. It has an incredible interface port selection. You've got the tube, which is possibly the best one of the lot because it allows you to connect other processors up to the BBC Micro. You've got the one megahertz data bus, you've got the user port, the printer port and the disk drive port. So it, was, it really was well equipped for ports. So we are gonna put this little black doohickey here into the user port now you can't get it wrong because there is these are polarized there is a notch cut in the bottom there and then there is a uh, mating notch on the connector so it can only go in one way so basically that just pop that little little one pops in there get it lined up there we go and then the clips will come in and hold it in place easy as that and then this, I think it's an RJ connector. I think it's probably an RJ45. Then that just pops in there like that. And you got it, you're done. It's all connected. So I'll flip it back over. We'll put the case cover on and we'll get it connected back up to the monitor. So we've got the ROM in place. We've got the SD to BBC interface in place and it's all connected up. So let's turn it on and see what we get. Okay, well that's looking good. Let's get a close it on that. So apart from BBC, uh, BBC Computer 32K and Basic, we've now got Smart SBI. So that's, that means that the computer's seen the ROM and the ROM is seeing the SD card. So we're good to go, hopefully. So let's come back out. Now, in order to access the SD card and what's on it, it's a simple matter of pressing shift and brake. Hold the shift key down, hold the brake key down. And we get nothing at all. <laughs> so we've got a problem. Now, yeah, nothing's happening. Now, this could be a combination of factors. And I suspect that it's actually something wrong with the BBC Micro rather than anything to do with the SD to BBC. Now, I know shift is working because I've been, let me take you back to the screen. Yeah, I know shift is working because I've, um, typed in a few programs to check to see that the thing runs and I've used shift. So for example, four key gives you four when you press it. When you hold the shift key down, it should give you the dollar sign, which it does. 
and we'll do the other shift key. Uh, what's a good one? Six. Six is six. Hold the other shift key down and we should get the and sign. So the shift key is working. So probably means the brake key isn't doing anything. Now, is it control brake on here, which does a hard reset? Yeah, the brake key, yeah, the brake key's just not doing anything. So I'm gonna whip the cover off and take the keyboard out and stick the meter on it and see what whether the brake key is actually doing it. I believe on the BBC mic, the brake key is unique in the fact that it doesn't run through any electronics on the keyboard. It literally runs straight back to the motherboard and it puts a short on some logic gates on the motherboard when you press it. So that's a good thing because all the other keys on the keyboard appear to be working. So hopefully it's just a dodgy brake key not making contact. Keyboard's loose, so I'm gonna, so there's the brake key right there. So we're gonna flip it over like that. So the contacts for the brake key are these two here. Let me come in, come in a little bit closer on that for you. So it's these two here. That's the function nine key and that's the brake key. So what I'm gonna try and do now is um, hold the contacts on and then uh, I've got my uh, fluke set up over here. It's on audio, so it should beep when you get a short. And I'm gonna stick the leads from the, on, onto the back of the switch. Now that's weird, it's, it's reading 76 ohms, which is neither open circuit or short circuit. And I'm gonna press the key now. Nothing at all, it's doing absolutely nothing. Now what I'll do is I'll go onto the function nine key here, which is the next one to it, which is reading open circuit on the meter and there you go. And that's exactly what the brake key should do. But it's not doing anything. It's completely weirdly sitting at 766 ohms, which it should definitely not be doing. Actually, I'll, I'll pull out so you can see the meter. There we go, right. So let's get the probes again. Yes, this, this is what you should get. This is the F9 key, which is reading open circuit. And then when I press it, it goes down to nothing, short. Now we've got the brake key, which is reading 766 ohms. And when I press it, no change. So that's definitely the problem <laughs> with the brake key. So now I'm gonna to have to investigate that a bit further. They're fairly easy to take apart these switches. I'll probably have to take it out of the board and uh, maybe stick some deoxid in it, that might do the trick, but we'll have a look anyway. Well, here is the offending brake key. After removing it from the board and um, dousing it in deoxid and activating it hundreds of times, it does sort of work, but it's very iffy. Fortunately, there's a um, guy on eBay, Retro Clinic, who, he sells spare ones of these. So I've ordered a couple just in case there are any more <laughs> I am as yet unaware of, and we'll replace this with, uh, with a working one. But for the time being, I've lashed in this brake key, which is a momentary toggle switch, which I'm hoping will do the job and um, we'll actually be able to get the uh, menu for the SD to BBC to come up on the screen. So fingers crossed. Right, so I'll turn this on again. Yeah, right, so it's it's seeing the card. So it's shift and break. So let's see what happens. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Excellent. Good. So the, the brake key was definitely duff, no doubt about that. Let's see if we can tilt these lights away. Come up a bit better. Yeah, that's better, yeah. So this is what you should get when you press shift and brake, not uh, nothing happening like we had before. So there's literally, uh, I mean, there's literally hundreds of games on here. Uh, there's 65 pages. I mean, just look at this.
Now I don't know whether there's a page down on this that you can you can do. I need to look up the instructions and see. But um, we need to get to. I mean, obviously, what I'm trying to go for is we're finding. Ah, there we go. Right. So. <laughs> right again. Let's see what happens. Oh, that brings back so many memories. <laughs> oh God, I get to waste hours and hours on this. But uh, Elite for the BBC Micro. Acornsoft 1984. Yes, brilliant. Well, at least we know that the uh, SD to BBC is working fine. It was just a keyboard fault on the BBC Micro itself that was causing all the problems. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's it really for this, this part of it. Um, I've got some other uh, mods I want to do and uh, obviously I need to repair the brake key. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it for the SD to BBC mods. And uh, uh, I'll leave you with the old Elite start screen. <laughs>